Hi, Chris Monteria here for as a special segment to the Medic Cast, and we're here at EMS World Expo 2015, and I'm pretty excited to roll out something uh, that uh, I didn't know Jamie had a talent for, quite honestly. So I'm joined by Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? And I'm also joined I, by I your don't editor. Have any talent, so I don't know where it came <laughs> from. I really don't. But well, um, we're here today to talk about your new book, Extreme Medical Services. But uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Sorry, I didn't read it. I didn't have people to read it for me before but uh, but oh, we're gonna will. we're gonna dive into what it's about so what was your inspiration to kind of write a book write a novel even well a couple of things I'd had this kind of strange idea of floating around in my head for a paranormal focused EMS novel and I kind of took that idea and and um, this past year in November which is National Novel Writing Month I was challenged by somebody yes. to write 50,000 words or better novel in 30 days. Wow. And I took this idea that I had rattling around in my head and I wrote about 2,500 words a day until I was wow. done. And I hit about 65,000 words when the novel was finished and it turned into extreme medical services. And the concept is this, you know, we all these paranormal stories on television and in novels different things out there all have this premise that living amongst us without us knowing it are all of these mythical creatures of legend right <laughs> so and i thought well if they are really living among us who do they call for 911 right <laughs> the, hence extreme medical services <laughs> those paramedics that have to treat people that they don't know what they're going to run into so you have to be creative, you have to be adaptive, you have to take human physiology and adapt it to a whole other set of standards and, and thoughts. And, and that's what Extreme Medical Services is. So um, here's the book. I'm gonna show that on the cooking shot here. Um, it's well, it, You know what, two things I like about this. First off, it's a book. It's an actual book. I know you have it on electronic media, things like yep. that, but it's an actual book. You can smell it, you can taste it, you can lick it if you wish. Um, no, <laughs> don't lick it. Um, but tell me about Dean Flynn. Tell me about his character development okay. and where he came from. Where, so, where did he pop out of? Dean Flynn is that, that super medic, that kid that comes out of paramedic school. Um, in this novel, Paragon. it is an associate's degree paramedic program because I think that's important. Okay. And I All think right. that that's something that All needs right. to happen. So I wrote it in the world that I think is the appropriate place for paramedics. So it truly to go. is fiction. Oh, so sorry. it truly is fiction. Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice thing about creating your own. So, world. Uh, Dean is, is this brand new paramedic who's the top of his class and he thinks he's going to get the pick of the si assignments in his, in his city where he's going to work and he's thinking he's going to get everything that, that's going to be handed to him on a silver platter because he's the medic who knows it all. He's come out of school. Who hasn't been there, right? We think we know everything when we come out of school. No. And he gets sent to this obscure station he's never heard of called Station U. And he's like, what is this? It's in an industrial park in the like backwoods part of the city. And he doesn't know what he's getting himself into. He's got this crotchety paramedic named Bryn who is, doesn't want to have a new partner, but ends up having a new partner. And she complains about him incessantly, calls him Proby. <laughs> and the first, the first call they go out on is a werewolf in diabetic crisis with low blood sugar. <laughs> starts to change as a sugar drop oh because my gosh, what makes a awesome. werewolf change when they have altered mental status <laughs> so what makes and altered mental status is blind low blood sighted. sugar oh my and gosh, he ends up seeing brilliant. this creature change in front of him while his partner's wrestling with this creature and he's supposed to try to figure out how to give this thing glucagon in the middle so of it so i'm sensing a thing vampires hypovolemic Maybe. Oh. Uh, maybe vampires have lethal arrhythmias all the time. Maybe a vampire in a normal rhythm on a heart monitor for a vampire should be V-fib. If you see runs of V, t if you see runs of sinus tachycardia, they're about they're to in die. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam, uh, you are an author as well. You are yeah. an accomplished author. So, um, what made you want to? to edit his book what, what was well the... because I know Jamie and we're right. friends and I thought this might be fun I just I wanted to know what came out of his head <laughs> and when I started scary. reading it I, I saw a whole side of Jamie I didn't realize and he's very quirky dude man he, but the characters I, I have to tell you a little bit about my favorite character he's like a an ancient vampire who presents as a 45 year old paunchy dude that has trouble finding a girlfriend <laughs> And he finds his girlfriend and he's trying to impress her and she loves Twilight. 
Well, Twilight, oh, I, I had God. not watched yeah, that, right. but I guess the vampire glitters. Well, he decided to put glitter on himself. Well, he didn't realize he's allergic to it. <laughs> so when the girlfriend comes out of her work, Here's the ambulance, and they, he's full of hives and whatever else. And I felt so. I love this character. He he's ever present, but this poor guy. You know, what do you do when you're a 600 year old vampire that can't get a girlfriend? And I just. <laughs> Uh, oh, and his story gets weirder and weirder, but it's, I just, I said, so where did he come up with these characters? What goes through, what goes through the mind of a paramedic when they can create their own world? Well, right here. And that's just one example. And this poor guy, this lead character, doesn't get much of an introduction to this other than when he's right dead in the middle of it and, and trying to figure out what the heck's going on. It's just amazing. You have to get anybody in EMS will laugh their way through this book. Nice. Because you'll you'll pick up on things maybe the regular world won't, but there's there's some key things in there that EMSers and, will And really the thought really process, enjoy. Chris, was, you know, we've all been there. When we all came out on the street in the beginning, we thought we knew everything, yeah. and we got thrown to the wolves. <laughs> Our Literally. clinicals didn't yeah, prepare us for it. Our ride-alongs didn't prepare us for it. We got thrown out there with our preceptor, and we are just thrown into it. And nothing prepares us for that. Dean Flynn's no different. Just because his, his patients are completely different doesn't mean that he doesn't have the same problems that every brand new paramedic has. So you know what I like about this though is you've taken something you know well. You know paramedicine, you know medicine well. And you've turned it into something really cool and different. And I think that's that's really very unique. So it's a fast read. It's only 138 pages, very small. About 65,000 um, words, yeah. it's a small novel. I mean, it's great. And you have plans for maybe a uh, There's gonna, there's already sequel? a sequel. I'm already about halfway through the second wow. book. There's gonna be at least three. Wow. I've already planned it out that far. Um, I hope to have the, thir the second book out in time for Christmas. Very cool. Because people are clamoring. They got to the end of the book, and I, I've well, been hearing from nice people already. Cliffhanger at the end. Uh, I can't believe you did that. When's the next book coming? <laughs> <Thank out? you. laughs> Can so, I read the last sentence? To no, I'm kidding. I, won't do that. I don't even know. <laughs> I won't do that, too. Um, so, Jamie, where can people pick up a copy of Extreme Medical Services? So, if you want an actual physical copy of the book, you can get it over at Amazon.com for the physical copy of the book. If you'd like the copy uh, of any of the ebooks, any of your ebook services out there, so Amazon, iBooks, uh, Kobo, Nook, Barnes, Barnes and Noble, Noble. Um, any of the ebook services out there have it available. If you are on an ebook service that doesn't make it available, email me podmedic at mac.com and I will make it available there. I think I've got it everywhere, but I'm sure there's some places that don't have it. And so I've, I've heard for a special price you'll actually it, sign it. Yeah, and I will I will send you a signed copy if you'd like that, just request it. I'll work out payment with you and I'll ship it to you. So it's not a problem. Very cool. Well thank you, Jamie. Thank, thank you, Sam. You. I appreciate Certainly. it. Great book. I can't wait to read it. Um, ExtremeMedicalServices.com. I, 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 I haven't even got my own copy yet. Um, I'm Chris Montera, and thanks for joining us on this special edition of the MedicCast from EMS World Expo 2015.